Hi everybody, Colin Stevenson here today again, joined with John Lenhart. Hi John, how are you, my hero? Great. Uh, yeah. um, today we are going to talk about the model of all modelers, is that right? Yes. I like that. Now, John has a way of working that he is teaching to me that I'm learning from daily and we'll never learn everything because everybody's different. But what John is teaching me is how to engage with somebody the way that they want to be engaged, you know, and how to work them out. And John has got a model for this. And today, John is going to explain to us how we can do it. So I'm going to learn while we're on here as well with you. So John, please tell us more about it. So I'm a modeler and I model everything. In fact, I have modeled models. Love that. So I don't know anybody else who's done this. If, so, if you know someone else has done this, please contact me. But we'll have a link on this video. And we have a very, like I'm going to say, a five-minute animation that I'm going to kind of go through to explain the model for models. And what that means is everybody's got a model for everything. Whenever you ex ask anybody to explain something, they have a model. But the key is there's only four types of models. So what I do on LinkedIn or Facebook is, it just like Colin says, I want to understand them. So when they start talking about anything, I can ask them one question, basically, what's your definition or what do you mean by or how would you explain whatever they're saying, love, leadership, whatever. And then their answer is going to fit in one of four categories. And then I know exactly how to approach them. And the way that we illustrate this is through how scurvy was eliminated. So I don't know how many people realize this, but, you know, basically like, you know, between 1,500 and 1,700, 2 million Europeans died of scurvy. This was a big deal thing. I mean, this is bigger, you know, than COVID if you think about it. Yeah. And what happened is, is that scurvy actually was not cured until the 1940s, late 40s and 50s in Europe by a study done with conscientious war objectors. And in the 1960s in America by a study done with Iowa State Prison. Prison. Okay. So really, if you think about it, scurvy's only been uh, cured in the last 70 years. And this is where people don't really understand the story of scurvy. So the first level of a model, I call it causeless. So there were the Crusades and these people were dying of scurvy and no one knew why. And when you asked them why, they said, well, we don't know. Maybe we didn't pray enough. Maybe we, who knows? No one can know. I'd say that causeless. So some people have a model when you ask them, like, what's your definition of love? They go, love is love. <laughs> love is love is love is love is love. Yeah. Or it is what it is. That's a causeless model. It's very damaging to the brain. Okay, now, just as you picked up on that there and what you were talking about in the scurvy, what I was feeling when you were discussing it is the same as mental health. Now, people don't realise what's actually harming their mental health on this planet. Now, it's, oh, it's because of this, it's because they've not got a cause. Now, I believe the cause is people are damaging themselves because they've not got a model for certain things and definitions that they don't use, they can't explain. And this is causing them harmful thoughts, which cause their own mental health to deteriorate. Now, would you say that this was something similar or? <laughs> well, here's the thing, you know, you and I don't rehearse this, so this is funny. Um, <laughs> first of all, this model applies to everything. So my short answer is yes, but you just cut right through everything, don't you? you just, you're like, that's exactly what we're talking about here because if someone gives you a causeless answer they are damaging your brain your brain works by cause and effect and what they're doing is putting an effect in your brain in place of a cause why should you listen just listen listening's an effect if you put that in your brain so i like to say you know we didn't know this but now at our late age we now realize that when people told us, be good for goodness sake, <laughs> they were damaging our brain. You're putting an effect in your brain in place of a cause, and that damages them. Now, mental health, really, <laughs> the big issue is the next level. So what happened was, eventually people found out that scurvy was a dietary issue. They realized, if you eat certain things, 
you don't get scurvy. If you don't eat certain things, you know, you're going to end up with scurvy. So they realized it was dietary. So what they started telling people is eat well, eat well. So the third, the, the next level of a, of a model is to just state the effect, eat well. Now, does that really help you? If, I, if someone says eat well, does that be smart? Okay, we call these platitudes. Okay. And on LinkedIn and Facebook, 95% of the models are platitudes. So what happens is, and one of my favorite videos is a little three-year-old boy. He's called the world's youngest life coach. And he stands there and goes, sharpen your saw, be positive. Eat well, okay? <laughs> he is saying that, and people go, that's what a life coach is. He has helped me. Have I helped you if I say, well, I love to say to people, is this a value to you? Because if it is, here we go. Be good. Don't hurt people. Be smart. Be strong. I'll send you my check. Because if you think that's a value, you're going to pay me. Now, do you really think that's a value? Personally, I don't. <laughs> so again, it's taking, it's breaking that down further to understand what effects these can have when we do it. Well, see, and this is where you talked about mental health. Okay. So how is a person stating platitudes different than a drug pusher? A drug pusher gives you this momentary thing that makes you feel better for the moment. And it makes you more addicted to the momentary thing. Yep. And then you form this addiction and you're hurt long term. So how is a platitude person different than a drug pusher? They're not. They're absolutely not. There's two differences. Right, okay. Number one, what the drug pusher is doing is illegal. It yeah. is not yeah. illegal to go on LinkedIn and say platitudes. Number two, the person doing platitudes is damaging people more than the drug pusher. If what do you believe is the worst damage? Is it physical drug addiction or is it mental, emotional, spiritual deception by people stating platitudes and thinking they're helping you? The latter, absolutely. That's the most damaging thing because that's what leads to then them using the drugs as a crutch. So why don't we recognize that this level of a model stating platitudes is that damaging? We don't. And so we glorify these people who get on. And what's the excuse? Why do you, I'll say to people, why do you think that's valuable? It made me feel good for the moment. So do drugs. Yep. And it, it's making you more addicted. So this is the second level. When I just hear an effect and, and people act like that's an explanation for a cause and, and, and they just want you to, you know, be good. Did that make you good? There is, I'm going to tell you, 94, 95% of all models are stating effects. And that is what's wrecking people. Yep. Now, right, okay, so we could talk about LinkedIn leaders and LinkedIn coaches and life coaches. We could talk about this all day. And again, we're not derogatory. We just restate the way the world is and we show, you know, we give them the tangible, <laughs> you know, the evidence of it. But... When it comes to people, people just want, when it comes to guidance, people want to be told the short method because it's the quickest way. They're not willing to do the work on a lot of things. So when you're talking about be good, oh, is that all I need to do? Great. And they go and try to be good, but they don't understand the, all the workings behind them, what they really have to be doing. So not only are they giving their power away to people that are giving these examples, Okay, they're, they're taking that away from themselves, but then again, they're, they're, they're taking the shortcuts as well. Right, so now that leads to this next level, this third level. So now we're going to get to a tangible cause. So what happened was people found that eating limes stopped scurvy. So they thought it was the lime juice, so they concentrated up the lime juice took it on the boats. And what a lot of people think is, oh, scurvy was cured hundreds of years ago by citrus. Well, what happened was the lime juice didn't work. 
and people thought it was a hoax. Worse, people who live in the Antarctic, people who live where there's no citrus, they don't get scurvy. How, why don't they get scurvy? Then there was an explorer who was going through Canada and he boiled the needles of a white cedar, like made tea out of it. That's not citrus, he didn't get scurvy. A guy locked himself up in a hospital for a year and only ate meat and he didn't get scurvy. Napoleon's army, you know, avoided scurvy by eating horse meat. So, and then another thing is when milk got pasteurized, kids started getting scurvy. So everybody started going, citrus is not the answer to scurvy. Actually, that was, they, they all thought it was a hoax back then. Yeah. And their model was toming. They thought meat, fresh meat cured scurvy. That was their answer, fresh meat. But if the meat isn't fresh, it has an impurity called toming. And then you eat citrus or acidic food, to kill the tomate. So the answer was fresh meat and citrus. So that's dealing with a cause, that's a model, that has a why. Now that does work for a specific context, but when you take it outside the context, it's not gonna work. If you don't have the right type of meat, and we're gonna learn what that is in a second when we get to the fourth level, if you don't have the right situation, all of a sudden, you're going to end up dying. So there was a context where that does work. So a lot of what you and I do is we have a topic, we give people a why, we give people an application, and we are actually operating in this level. And the best models in the world, what people think are the best models, are this level. They give an explanation in a context. Yeah. Uh, again, what we'll talk about in a second probably i'd imagine will be to do the person's uniqueness to do with <laughs> with the cause now again so we can't put this out we can put the type out to everybody but again they've got to take their own thing from it you know that that's unique to them i would imagine to put this into fruition right so the, the key thing to real about realize about this level is it's the context is everything so if you think about it, if someone gives me a cause list, my response is, would it be okay if I did that back to you? If you say it is what it is, my response is, if your wife is dying of cancer, would it be okay if the doctor went, eh, it is what it is, pay me, okay? If someone gives me an effect, then I just ask him, is that a value? And that's an unconscious confrontation. Is that a value to say eat well? Is that something you'd pay for? Uh, they back down. The context one is interesting because what I do is I change the context. Okay, that sounds great. Now, how would it work over here? And I'll give you a great example. In the 1950s, cigarettes were advertised on TV for their health benefits. How could they get away with it? Well, contextually, it made sense because in the 1950s, what they said was, if you are operating heavy machinery or you're driving a vehicle late at night, if you smoke a cigarette, you're less likely to die because you're more awake. You're more yeah. aware of what it is. And then they say, do you want people to die working heavy machinery or driving late at night? <laughs> no. Well, then you're for smoking. That's how they went to a context and the context fit them. But the thing is, is that long term, it, it's killing these people long term. Yeah. But short term, it got them through this moment. So that's when I look at, when I see someone who has a model with a why, what I do is I go change the context. Does your example work in a different context? Now, what we know from a, our video last week with Dissolve, this is Solve. And what I'm trying to do, and this is a tangible cause, in order to have the answer, you need to have an intangible cause. You need to have an answer that works in every context. Yeah. So the way I blow up a model in this fresh meat and citrus area is change the context and have them go, well, it's not meant for that. Okay. Then it's only meant for this setting and that's great, but you can't apply it out here. Right. Okay. I love that. So again, could you actually make this so that it was for different people? So two people could have different problems. So that's where you could change the context between the two different people. And again, that would be down to their unique. So it wouldn't work for you, but it would work for you. So this is the point where we can turn around and we can say, well, we need to look at this again. 
we actually have to change something here. Right. So the best people on LinkedIn, you know, people who have EQ, let's say they, they sell EQ stuff, they have a, the why and they'll explain that. But then what I'll say is what we said in our last video about exhorters, I'll say, okay, there's an exhorter upset. How would you talk to them? I talk calm. I change the context. I, by their uniqueness, this is an exhorter and what you're doing here doesn't work here. It makes it worse. Now we got to step to the final level. The final level was vitamin C. Somebody identified hexaronic acid was, you know, in the vitamin C, they, they found out it dealt with uh, scurvy and they dealt and they, they uh, basically did tests and they proved that basically hundred percent vitamin C prevents at hundred percent level scurvy so what we i call it a truth it's an intent it focuses on tangible cause it dissolves the issue you don't have to worry about what you eat just take this pill yep and the thing is is that it it always works in every application so that's why i say it's a truth the vitamin c level model now there's two huge advantages in having a vitamin c model number one is you can have the ultimate answer so if you think about scurvy there is a food that has vitamin C and it's the only food that has an infinite shelf life. It will never go bad. And that's honey. Right. Okay. If they had taken honey on those ships, no one would have had to die. So there is a dissolve. You and I said it last week, yeah. there's a dissolved everything. Honey would have dissolved scurvy and 2 million Europeans wouldn't have had to die. So when you understand when you have a vitamin C answer, you can go to the, to the dissolved answer. Number two, when you have a vitamin C answer, you can prove who is killing other people. Someone could give you certain food. Someone could say eat well, but the person who knows vitamin C can assess it and go, that person's killing you. They didn't mean to, but they killed you. And that's the issue. That's what you and I are trying to help all our viewers deal with, is we have a vitamin C model for the mind and the brain. We have a vitamin C model for mental health, and we can show you who is hurting people on LinkedIn, Facebook, and everything on the internet. And in five or 10 years, as all these people start recognizing, and they're recognizing it more each day about how human brains actually work, we're going to look back at everybody's internet record and go, that person was killing people. That person was advocating smoking. That person was advocating a blackface. It's the same thing. So that's why I can be totally calm dealing with people on the internet because I have a vitamin C model. And an example I will give you is this. All of chemistry is based on Bohr's model for the atom. And this is all a vitamin C model looks like. This is, this is Bohr's model. But every atom is made up of a nucleus, protons, neutrons, 99% of the weight, and it's circulated by an electron. That's how simple. If you can state a model simply, we have a model, car and driver, driver and car. You are a driver in a car. Your mind is the, the driver, your brain is the car. And everything we do builds off of that. Yeah. So can you state your model in a vitamin C fashion? Very, 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 very few models are a vitamin C fashion. And the problem is because people don't understand these ratings, they can't tell when they're seeing a vitamin C or not. And so the more, when I ask somebody their model and I get an answer this long, I know it's not vitamin C. You should, I, I've said this before. Everybody who's proven me wrong has done it in three sentences or less. The more sentences you write to prove me wrong, the more you're going to contradict yourself. And that's the issue with the fresh meat and citrus level. There is a contradiction in that fresh meat and citrus. Okay, because there's tea. And that's the thing, is when you understand vitamin C, there's vitamin C in the needles of a white cedar. There's vitamin C in milk, and when you pasteurize it, it goes away. There's vitamin C in organ meat. An Eskimo kills an animal and takes the heart and gives it to his wife. Why? Because it's full of vitamin C and he wants her to be healthy. There's, there is vitamin C in fresh meat. There's vitamin C in horse meat. When you cook it, that's a whole other thing. But so what happens is there's vitamin C in a lime, but if you concentrate lime juice, the vitamin C goes away. Right. So the vitamin C answers everything that's happening. Everything's completely clear. That's what I have. I have a vitamin C model for the mind and the brain. And the longer people try to do anything else, 
the more they are setting a case for them being guilty because I have presented this information to 600 million of the best and brightest people on LinkedIn and all the best influencers. And so every one of them now are guilty from this point forward of everything that's going to happen that doesn't help people's mental health. And I love asking people their definition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, can we also talk about this? Because I explained to you, I had a conversation earlier with a teacher and the way that the school works as well. Now, the school and business is the same thing. It's teaching people or coaching and teaching. We're we're trying to nurture people into a certain way of their unique self. That is the, that is my definition of teaching, okay? We're trying to teach them to be better for themselves, to be better for other people, which again is how we should be doing it. But at the moment, there's the blanket, there's the eat well. So in classroom, it's sit there, be quiet and learn and just take this in, this information and do it the same as everybody else. Now, if, the vitamin C model that you speak about, which I believe and you believe can be taken into schools, not only kind of younger schools, but right the way through to universities. Like how many people would we get actually learning what's meant for them and learning how they can benefit other people uniquely? Right. And that's, again, I, I ask, you know, I love when I talk to schools or businesses, I ask them this question, what's your goal? What is, how, and how are you going to go about it? They're giving me a model. And when they don't answer and go, well, it just is what it is, that's that causeless. When they go, profits, kids need to be smarter. How do you plan on doing it? Kids need to be smarter, okay? <laughs> We're just going to state in effect, okay? And then when you get down to the next level, people go their mission and vision. People in school go, we have these techniques to help them read. We have these techniques to help them do this. And that's where they're denying the uniqueness. We're going to teach every kid this technique. Most of them are going to grow from that. The ones who don't, we'll put them in special ed. We'll declare them a problem child. And like we said with the server how video, it turns out the people who affect our, our world the most don't learn in this region. There was a book called The Souls Code. They, they looked at you know 300 of the brightest and most influential people, and they said 65% of those people had serious, serious issues with school. Not had issues with school, serious issues. Two thirds of the most brightest and best had problems like behavioral acting out problems. If our goal is to go to this fresh meat and citrus and go, let's just get, we have a causal way to get their brain up. We're gonna do that. What we're doing is we're making schools less safe because now the behavior issues kick out because we're not dealing with the uniqueness and we're missing out on all these geniuses. Yeah. So the reality is, is what you said is if we understood how to help these kids learn how they uniquely learn, which includes how they uniquely motivate themselves, then school would be serving its purpose. What is the purpose of school? And I wrote all about this on LinkedIn with Dr. Acoff. He said the purpose of education, actually education is a bigger system than business. Everybody in business is trying to teach you something. <laughs> Nobody in school is trying to sell you something. So school and education is actually a bigger system than business. And the fact that business doesn't appreciate that about education and the fact that education doesn't throw its weight around the business shows that education is deceived. Education thinks they're the smallest system and business is the bigger. ACOF showed it was the other way. And that he essentially traced all the problems in the world to our flawed perspective on business because of our flawed perspective of education. That's mega. So again, we can go in here for ages, but we'll, we'll wrap up shortly. But what I'm trying to think about is, so if we are teaching these children the eat well method, which I believe is happening just now, okay? If, how are they ever going to be who they, are, who they really are when they grow older? So effectively what is being done is their mental health is being destroyed and programmed into this at a young age. Now, I've discussed with you before, I wasn't particularly into learning at school. You know, you know me now, I love learning, I'm a sponge. When I'm gaining energy and I'm able to learn something that suits me, my way that I'm able to help other people with. It's like, oh, what you teach me on a, on a weekly basis and what we've learned before, 
it gets me going. It makes me feel energetic. Now, when I was at school, I used to like talking in class. And it was only because I was disengaged about what was pointed towards me. Now, they all used to say, and I've told you this before, Colin is a lovely boy, very polite, well-mannered, kind lad, could work harder, easily distracted, all these things, you know. And I used to get put up at the back of the class. I wasn't badly behaved. I never shouted or threw anything. But I used to get put up at the back of the class, sat in my own, you know, put outside the class to work because I couldn't stop talking. Now, again, that wasn't the way to, to take that away from me. They were taking me away from me to be or to try and make me what they thought I should be. Whereas now, I met my first teacher a year ago on LinkedIn who's able to teach me how to learn my way, which is then able for me to be able to teach other people their way. <laughs> you know? And it's just everything's kind of come full circle. It's a shame that it's taken 37 years of my life to get to where I am, but we can literally change this for, for kids all over the world from kind of middle school or junior school, whatever you call it, all the way through to high school and university, which will allow them to grow in their life. Right. So your compassion server, that's the nice kid. Your big picture external, that's the distracted and the, and the uh, distracting person. <laughs> yeah. That was all would it would have been able to be figured out your first day of kindergarten basically and that would have been happened so the issue is schools when you went to school you know schools were eat well they were just real abstract and everything and nobody was shooting each other up in school no. okay and but no one was getting ahead in learning the issue is is in the last i'm going to say you know 10 years these schools have gotten very fresh meat and citrus. They've gotten very, this is how we drive your achievement. We're going to make you learn this way. And that's when we started shooting kids up. So honestly, if the schools can't go to uniqueness, they need to go back to eat well. Because the longer they stay, what's happening is they're getting better and better at understanding the physical causes for a specific context, and they're getting better and better at driving that. And as they drive that, the kids who are not of that uniqueness are acting out. Yeah. So who's causing these kids to act out? All of these you know, experts who are getting better at driving at a fresh meat and citrus model, and they're the ones making the schools unsafe. So that's the change that's happened. If people go, well, John, how come this didn't happen before? We were eat well and everybody was great and no one was really learning or achieving, but then these people learned outside of school in a sense, but they weren't damaged. We've moved to this third level, fresh meat and citrus, we're getting better at it and we're forcing all the kids into here and, and that's why you're seeing the growth of special ed, that's why you're seeing the, the increase of all these behaviors and schools being more unsafe. It has all to do with the experts who don't understand we're human, we're not a robot, but they're trying to solve this at a robot level, fresh meat and citrus. Yeah, and we'll just finish off on one point I've just thought about again while you were speaking there. We wonder why we're not getting enough teachers through the ranks, enough doctors, enough surgeons, enough all of these because there's only a select few that are able to adhere to the model that's being given and everyone else is, is worthless pretty much. You know, they can go and they don't feel... When I believe that if they were taught properly, anyone could be a surgeon, anyone could be a doctor, anyone could, you know, and not only that, they could have compassion mixed in with that so they actually cared about their clients more or their patients, you know, that they're missing out so much because they're not taking the uniqueness of the person into consideration. Right, and, and I think this is going to go into you know, our video later this week. I think everybody can be that. I don't think everybody can get energy doing that because we're human. Yeah. But a lot of what happens is, is people pick an occupation that's in opposition to their uniqueness. They're able to do it, but it doesn't give them energy. And that's, again, where these life coaches fail, is they're like, I'm able to get you to do this thing. Great, but you're draining the person and wrecking them you know, psychologically. And so there, we're human. It has more to do with energy than ability. That's amazing. No, thank you. And thank you again for today, John. It's an eye-opener for people for sure. And again, I've learned. I love the, the model. And I hope people start to use this in the way that they want to 
even ask more questions as to get people's definitions. It's been great. So thank you so much. And I will speak to you later on in the week. Cheers, John.